I guess this is more a personal question. How did you come to be uh, working as both a scientist who is deaf, but also on on particularly focused on sign language? Is that how you started out in science? Well, it's a bit of a story, but uh, I started getting interested through my interest in art. And somehow, when I was studying at UCLA, I started to switch over to the scientific inquiry. And I got interested in the brain and how it functions. Often, we take for granted what we see around us, how the brain processes, how we speak, how we communicate. Um, how we process information and express ourselves. It's amazing, really. And once I got started, I just uh, delved into it fully. Sign language is wonderful to study, and I feel I can contribute my experience personally by my personal perspective. Uh, what, uh, what people tend to take for granted, hearing and deaf people, it's different. But we can work collaboratively as a team and, and challenge the assumptions that we have in our work and our experiences. And often we might make wrong assumptions and we need to share other perspectives. So this is the scientific method and I enjoy that and have throughout my career. It's interesting though, isn't it, that uh, science prides itself on its objectivity and there's often a lot of debate about how much subjectivity scientists bring to their work and whether that either strengthens their science or compromises their science. I wonder how you think about that relationship. Well, I think the thing about science is, first of all, you have to be curious, right? Uh, you have to have some subjective experiences, and then that can be supported by data. So you have to have good experimental design, of course. You have to be able to analyze the results and support your observations, uh, but um, that's an ongoing process. And I think that subjectivity, as subjective experience, is important because it can guide your process in the end. Um, the results have to be based in data. Do you think the fact that you are a native signer brings something quite distinct to the science? Can you give some dimensions to what that would be? Well, I think one thing that I can say is that my experience uh, as a visual person, I can compare um, let me, well, let me give you an example. Growing up deaf, um, when I was a young boy, and I was deaf, I considered being deaf perfectly normal, whereas other people had a different perspective about me. And I thought, what do you mean? This is the way it is. As I grew and matured, I started to understand that people hold different meanings to this experience of being deaf. Uh, most related to their particular experiences and perspectives of life. So that I feel I can, can contribute. Mm. Did you imagine that you would be a scientist? Never. <laughs> no, not a scientist. I thought I'd be an, an engineer. One thing that does come to mind, just in, in interviews that I've done over the years, um, let's just say, for example, indigenous people um, have, who become researchers have a kind of inner turmoil <laughs> or conflict, for example, about whether or not they've, they're kind of being anthropologists of their own experience, that, that, that somehow this is um, kind of politically incorrect in a way, that they're observing their own selves in as an anthropologist might. Do you know what I mean? I certainly know what you mean. I understand perfectly. And I think that every person has experiences that they have to go through, deaf or indigenous people. Um, but I think that science, well, people learn science uh, and they learn the facts and sometimes how to explain to people that political perspective it has to be distinct or separate we're trying to talk about the truth and uh, about understanding more about ourselves that's the foundation of it